Shock waves continue to ripple through Toronto's political scene following Premier Doug Ford's proposal to slash the number of city councillors by nearly half. Mayor John Tory, John Tory rather, today saying the public needs to have a say and there's still time to do that. And we still have a chance to implement part of this. Would have been for him to have an extensive discussion with me, for us then to agree we were going to have an extensive period of public consultation, including with the members of City Council, but much more importantly, the people of Toronto, uh, and or to have a referendum. This was the scene at Toronto City Hall last night as hundreds demanded Ford reverse his decision immediately. Demonstrators also took their protest inside City Hall to make their concerns heard. And they weren't the only ones bringing the heat. Take a look at this exchange between Mayor Tory and Councillor Mike Layton. It's been bothering me all day. Who knew about this in advance? Because it has been suggested that somebody knew about this in advance and didn't bring it to our attention. You demean me, but more importantly, you demean yourself when you get up and call my integrity into question. I think you should stand in your place and apologize to me and to this chamber for getting up and in that kind of that, that, that way where you're just kind of implying it but not saying it. Get up if you have the balls to do it and say it. Tory admits he had a brief discussion with Premier Ford about the topic. The mayor says the discussion went nowhere, though, and the premier gave no indication he intended to take such a drastic and sudden action. For his part, Councillor Mike Layton is now saying it's time to move on. It's is established now, it was mentioned by the mayor earlier today, he knew in advance uh, that in a passing conversation with the premier how brief that was. Uh, he, he knew that that was the premier's idea. What we need to do now is focus on our common uh, enemy in this, and that's Doug Ford for, for really uh, removing a layer of democracy from the city of Toronto. For more on this, let's bring in political analyst Michael Gagan. He is in Victoria, B.C. today. Michael, it's getting testy in Toronto. Um, what do you think about the province stepping in here trying to slash city councillors? Well, it's a very dramatic and gutsy move. Uh, certainly something uh, that uh, if you're going to do it, you do it early in your term as a premier. So uh, the fact that it seems to have been done without any prior warning, I think that's what's uh, taking people's breath away. But on the other hand, um, there is a certain synchronicity that Ontario seems to like in terms of having, you know, their, their federal ridings line up with their provincial ridings. And the proposal, I believe, is to have the ward system in Toronto line up uh, with, with that same riding structure. Uh, I guess the question is, how do, how do Torontonians feel that will do for their representation but also, on the other hand, the effectiveness of their elected representatives. I think, Michael, you know, the people we've been talking to, uh, it doesn't seem like people are opposed to the idea. I think it's the timing of this. We're three months to a municipal election. Uh, we know that the premier has the power to do this. The question is, should he? Yeah, certainly certainly less than a few months before a municipal election. Uh, I, that's part of what's the, the, the breathtaking audacity of it, in a sense. Uh, but on the other hand, I mean, uh, for a lot of business leaders, they like to follow the two-pizza rule. If if you need more than two pizzas uh, in a meeting so that everyone gets a slice, you have too many people in the room. And certainly there's been a lot of complaints over the years that uh, 49 councillors, uh, simply by the time every, everyone's done introductions, like half the evening is gone. So there's certainly an argument to be made for a, a leaner and more efficient council. Michael, let's move on to uh, the federal debate surrounding gun laws in our country. Uh, the Liberal government was already planning to table a gun reform bill, but of course we had the Danforth shooting this week. Do you think that will make it more restrictive? Oh, absolutely. The Liberals will move to, to do things uh, to, to restrict uh, the, uh, weapons of, of various types. Uh, I know there's been discussion about a handgun ban in Toronto. Um, I, I want to caution people on that for the simple reason that we have a lot of illegal weapons coming in from both the United States and Asia into Canada. Uh, that tragic shooting that happened in, Dan, uh, in Danforth, uh, the, the gunman, it was a stolen handgun. It was not mm -hmm. illegal purchased or registered handgun. And so I think we, we can't be naive here and we have to get beyond security theater, the symbolic things that make us feel good and look at effective actions. I personally think Canada, in terms of its firearms regulations, should be looking to the Czech Republic. We have a homicide rate that's 68 percent higher than the Czech Republic, but they have firearms. They have, uh, you know, I think stringent uh, procedures and processes in place. But they also have a situation where you have things like castle doctrine and a very limited number of well-vetted people who have concealed carry. So mm -hmm. it's perhaps, rather than always being fixated on us versus the United States, let's look to other countries that perhaps have this tuned a little better than we do. Michael, let's quickly talk NAFTA, U.S. Trade Representative, saying uh, we could maybe have a deal by August. Uh, would you put your money on that? <laughs> well, I'd certainly put my money 
and prayers on it because <laughs> uh, we need to have this deal. The nightmare scenario for us is that we're we're out of the equation and, and Trump doesn't deal with the EU and uh, and with Mexico and we're left out in the cold. Certainly, that's a huge impact to Ontario. We're talking, you know, 160,000 jobs, you know, uh, the, 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 the auto trade between us. I mean, what, if we can come to an agreement on there, I think that's 90 percent of the NAFTA deal done. So let's let's hope that those parties can make that deal. Trump wants to triangulate on China. That might put us in a bit of an awkward situation as well, but we need this deal, particularly for uh, Ontario's economy. Michael Gagan in Victoria, thank you. Thank you.